Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here, and we've got an open core legacy patcher hotfix available. 1.2.1 fixes a problem with the automatic root patcher after installing an update. Plus, we have a problem with open core legacy patcher macOS recovery. So if you're having an issue and you need to boot to macOS recovery, that is not working properly right now. And we have a late breaking update when I was editing this video that finds the exact version of open core where the problem is. Plus, we have our fleet of test devices, our four Sonoma devices, Ventura, Monterey, and Big Sur to make sure 1.2.1 2.1 installs a -OK. Let's get started. Now my 1.2.0 update video was more of a deep dive. We went over so many different things in that video, but in this video, we're going to be a more of a quick video to just go over the details of this fix. And we're going to talk about that recovery prop. 1.2.1 is a bug fix release for open core legacy patches launch agent failing to load after macOS updates. This update is not critical. However, it helps streamline the update flow for end users. For those upgrading to prior open core legacy versions, see below. So first of all, if you haven't updated to 1.2.0 already, these fixes in here and listed below will still be included in this update. If you're already on 1.2.0, this is going to fix that. So what does this mean? If you didn't catch my previous video explaining this issue, what happens is after you install a macOS update, like let's say 14.1.1, the system will, will wipe out all the root patches of Open Core Legacy Patcher. And when it comes back up, they have to be reinstalled. So after installing the macOS update, this is what they're gonna see. Open Core Legacy Patcher has detected that you're running without the root patches and would you like it them to be installed by the auto root patcher? If this does not come up after, the user usually knows. If you've installed Open Core before, you would know that, well, if this doesn't come up after the update, we have to go back into the app here and we've gotta run these manually, right? But if you're a new user and this doesn't come up after, you're not, you're not necessarily aware that you have to do this every time, you might be in kind of a pickle here to be able to wonder, well, what's next? Why is the system so slow? So what that's gonna do is it's gonna fix that launch agent from being able to fire up. So that launch agent is located in library and then launch agents, and these will run as the user. So what happens is there's permission problems with this log. So after we install the update, these will this part will be removed. Automatic group patcher will be able to run properly after. So let's run through a quick demo on how to update, and we'll watch this get fixed here live. So let's all update the, to the latest version of 1.2.1. Now you should get this new thing. We talked about this in 1.2.0. This is the brand new window for the, the patcher that you'll see when you are updated. But now the update is successful. We're on 1.2.1. One. Would you like to install the volume root patches? Yes. And install the disk. SSD and EFI. Password. So let that go. Now would you like to update the root patches? Yes, we do. Start root patching. And relaunches, yes. And look at that, it deleted the launch agent right there and it replaced it with a new one. And we should see the fix to that piece once we take a look at it. And yep, there it is. The logging that was causing all a bunch of problems is now removed and fixed. And now the automatic group patcher is repaired. So all we need to do is reboot. Okay, we are back in. Let's fire up our alias here. And we'll make sure that our root patches are installed. As you can see, the app is on 1.2.1. And when we click on the root patches, we'll be able to see that all the applicable patches are installed with 1.2.1 on November 12th. So we are good to go. Our launch agent is now repaired. Every time we install a macOS software update, this launch agent will kick off saying we need to install those root patches and go through the entire process. So we are good to go there. Okay, now let's talk about the macOS recovery problem. Now I wanna show you what that looks like. And that's important to you because if you need to recover or there's a problem with your system, you have the ability to boot into recovery to be able to fix issues. So I wanna show you how we do that. To boot into macOS recovery with Open Core Legacy Patch, all we need to do is click restart, and then we're gonna hold down the option key. Just like we do when we have to click on the Open Core bootloader and select the macOS operating system, but we're gonna do something a little bit different. We got our option key still holding down. So now we see our EFI boot. Now we'll click enter, but keep holding option. Now, once we're here, hit the space bar. Now we see our recovery options. I've got High Sierra on the system, but we don't even need to worry about that. Here's macOS recovery for 14.1. If we click on that, we should wait just a couple seconds or five to seven seconds and it should start to boot into macOS recovery, but it's not because there's a problem. You have to be prepared. 
Because again, if you're in the situation, like what happened to the users when 14.1 hit, you're not even able to fix your system now because you can't even get to macOS recovery. That's where that USB drive, that USB installer drive, you keeping that off to the side in a drawer or whatever is going to come in really handy in case you have an issue in the future. So as you can see, we're not booting it. We just got a black screen. So what can we do? So we're gonna power down and then we're gonna put in our USB drive here. Okay, we're off and now we're gonna power up. Hold on option again. Okay, there's a chime. And this time we're gonna see our USB drive, the installer drive that's so important to be able to have as a backup. So we'll hit that continue holding down option. Then we're gonna go into install macOS Sonoma, not recovery. We're gonna boot off the USB drive to be able to get into macOS recovery to be able to do any kind of repairs that we need on the system. So we'll give it a second here. And there we go. That's what you should see. The loading bar is loading. We're loading off of the USB installer to get into recovery. All right, there we're booting off the USB now and we're in macOS recovery off of the USB installer. And that's why it's important to have that USB installer put aside in case we have an issue like this. And that's the macOS recovery issue. Now let's go back to our fleet of demonstration Macs to make sure that the 1.2.1 update is installing properly with no issues. Okay, first up is our 2017 15 inch MacBook Pro and I always bring this one on because of the touch bar and you can see I'm using the assistive control and accessibility to be able to show the touch bar that you can display on the screen for assistive users and we're A-OK -okay with the touch bar, everything's working there, touch ID is working and we've got our Bluetooth sound and our Wi-Fi A-OK -okay on 1.2.1. Next up is our 2013 Mac Pro desktop. No issues here. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, good to go. No issues here. Next up on our list is our 2012 Mac Mini. Now I picked these four Sonoma devices because they're each an individual special case. For example, our 2017, it's got that touch bar. We gotta make sure it's working for the Mac Pro 2013. That's its own unique machine. For this late 2012 mini, it does not need the kernel debug kit. And that's a special situation too. So that's why I always test this guy. And this is one of the first Macs that has the metal graphics cards. We're okay on 1.2, everything's running okay on this little mini. Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and sound a-okay. And finally, to round it out, we've got our late 2011 17-inch MacBook Pro. And we picked this one because this one's got its own little issues with the bad graphics card that usually goes bad and it's non-metal. So we can test to make sure there's any non-metal issues and there's nothing to be seen here. The KDK is installed properly and cached, ready to go for 14.1. And we're running great on 1.2.1. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and sound, no issues. Now let's take a look at our trusty trio, Ventura, Monterey, and Big Sur. We're looking good on our demo machine, which is a mid-2015 15-inch MacBook Pro. We've got 13.6.1 installed. Now remember, I mentioned this earlier, but 13.6.2 is only for certain newer Mac devices for M1 and for M3. So don't think that you need to install that or even can be able to install it because it's only for those hardware. 13.6.1 is the mainline release for Intel and even some earlier M1 Macs. 1.2.1 is running got bluetooth wi-fi everything's running a-ok -okay. now for mac os monterey we've got 12.7.1 we did not see an associated update to 12.72 so we're still on that 1.2.1 is working very well on this early 2015 inch macbook pro wi-fi bluetooth looking good and finally good old trusty mac os big sur 11.7.0 was the final update and it is no longer supported by apple but we're still looking good 1.2.1 Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, everything is looking smooth here. Okay, we got a late breaking update on the Mac OS recovery not booting or a black screen issue that is localized to Open Core Legacy Patcher 1.2.0 and above and running Open Core EFI version 0.9.6. So anything above this here is going to have the issue. Anything below, for example, 1.1.0 is not gonna have the issue. And again, this is a testament to McCola. I reached out to him and I said, hey, can we take a look at this recovery issue? and right away within 10 minutes we were able to localize it to which version was causing the issue now i'm not recommending downgrading to for example open core efi 1.1.0 for example what i do recommend is before you install the next software update until this is fixed in the next version of open core legacy patcher to make sure you have that usb installer drive ready to go just in case you have a problem and you need to be able to get to recovery until that is identified and fixed in the next release and you'll be sure i'll keep you updated on that 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.